EMZT Radio is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio download and a free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com slash EMZT. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to another episode of EMZT Radio. I'm Bane Hellborn with my partner, the infamous MJ. I finally I ran out the houses and... Oh God! Oh God! I'm here! I'm here! I'm here! I'm here! I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, we've made it. We have we what? have tormented our kidnappers and thwarted their plans. <laughs> yes. Thank God this week is spring break. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this though: um, you're missing out if you're not going to Twitch.com/slash/EMZTProductions. That's Twitch.com/slash/EMZTProductions. We're having a lot of fun over there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to make sure everybody on the podcast knew of twitch.com slash UMZT Productions. Yes, we have to we have to let people know. That's yeah, a that's, new thing now. Yeah, that's twitch.com slash UMZT Productions. <laughs> it's the MJ only website you host. need. Yeah, it's the only website you need, so there you go. Yeah. Okay, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Find a link to the Discord we had, too. We had to take the last week off because uh i take the last two I was, weeks off let's be honest yeah it's been two weeks well one was my birthday week and the other was yeah. my dad needed me more at home so i didn't have any available time to to podcast so yeah yeah but we're back so yeah there. we're back <laughs> we're back for now <laughs> anyways hey matt uh-huh so did you hear from dread central uh, the first draft of Terrifier 2 has been written. Ooh. I've known about this because the first draft of Terrifier 2 was on Art the Clown's Facebook page. Yes. Okay. I'm a little behind. I'm sorry. I but know. I'm like, wow. And did you know that Dread Central acquired Epic Pictures, which filmed the, the original, well, the first one, uh, and the first one was a Kickstarter project, and uh-huh. it's completely awesome. And now they're working on part two, which they should. <laughs> they should. Because <laughs> Art the Clown, you are a scary fucker. <laughs> I actually had a friend of mine go up to a convention. actually go up to Charlotte. And this is what sucks about my life. One of the major horror conventions right there, literally an hour away. And now I have to work. Oh, man. So I missed one of my best friends uh, getting pictures taken with Art the Clown. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah, I know. Oh, man. I want to go tell him he did such a good job. He scared the piss out of me. Literally. <laughs> Literally. I'm on my bed. Yeah. There was a wet spot when I was done with that movie. <laughs> that was a fun movie. What are you talking about? Yeah. Totally no, no, fun. I'm saying it was good. It was awesome. I was like, that's coming into my collection. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are getting a Terrifier, too. So that's going to be yes. epic. So we're waiting to hear more about that. Yes. Um, also another... from... Oh, oh no, did you have ahead. something? No, I was okay. say, there's another sequel. Yes. That we, we have to talk about. Oh, yes. Because it used to be part of the opening of this podcast before we went to uh, Kim's Music, which you can find. You can always find Kim's Music all around us. Um, and that is the old intro used to say, this is the United States of EMZT radio. And right. where did the, this is the United States come from? Zombie land. <laughs> and what's this I'm reading? Woody Harrelson and Jesse Eisenberg are talking zombie land. Double tap. Nice. And two of my favorite words have entered the fray. Now filming. Oh, I love those words. Yeah. It's, you know, about time. We've been waiting how many years for number two? Ten years. Believe it or not, it's been ten years. Like several years. I'm serious. It's been ten years. It's been what? Ten, ten. years? Ten. Ten. One zero. Son of a yeah. bitch. Really? Yeah. Ten years since Zombieland. Wow. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah. So there you go. Well, here's another sequel coming up. <laughs> And this is going to be, okay, this this one, I wasn't thrilled with the first movie because when I saw it, I was 10 years old and I didn't understand what I was watching, but I Spit on Your Grave, the original 1978, mm-hmm. six years after Last House on the Left, 
So Mayor Zarchi, the original director, is directing a sequel, like a, a sequel 40 years later. How about that nice. for a sequel? So, I'm all and, for that. Yeah, and he's doing the original. It's the original girl, Camille Keaton, is, is back in it as Jennifer Hills with her character's daughter. And she's being revenged upon by the families of the guys that she killed. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm all so, for that. I'm in. Yeah, so that looked good. It's called I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. Yes. It, uh, I don't think it came out in the theaters, but it is coming out on DVD and Blu-ray in April, April 23rd. And the pre-sales at Amazon started March 7th. So I'm really looking forward to that from the yeah. original director from the first original film. Yes. And I found out he also executive produced the remakes oh sweet yeah so he was sweet. he's put some of his career in here so i'm really looking forward to that i mean oh original i spit on your grave was so brutal and uh it was called too shocking and provocative for the time which it was it looked like an actual rape film oh it was it, yeah that was that was a snuff uh, it was basically as close to a snuff film as we got well, like I said, Back it was six years after yeah. Last House on the Left, which was yeah. just as bad with the rape and everything. Yeah. So, so, wow. Yeah. I've got something else for you. Okay. It's finally coming to America, kids. Hagaz, Hagazusa, I guess that's how you would pronounce it. H-A-G-A-Z-U-S-S-A. -S -S -A. That's how you spell it. Okay. Made its debut in 2017. That's right, kids. Germany's answer to The Witch oh. is coming to America. Limited theater run April 19th. Is it an English film or is it going to be subtitled? It will be subs. Okay. Wow. Now, yeah. Germany. Germany has some interesting directors and uh, films from... Oh, yeah. So here you go. If you are near one of these areas, run. Don't walk. Run <laughs> to your nearest theater. Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Seattle, all April the 19th. Uh, Phoenix has, doesn't have a date beside it, but I would mm. either make the educated guess that it's either the 19th or the 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, Houston will be April 24th. Washington, D.C., April 26th. And the People's Republic of Portland, April the 30th. Nice. So remember, kids, run. Don't walk to your closest theater. <laughs> yes and Netflix with writer-director Mike Flanagan from The Haunting of Hill House they're doing season two but they're now doing a multi-year project on this it's now going to be called The Haunting and they're going to each season is going to feature a different haunted house story with d the families that live there oh nice so. So yeah, that sounds that sounds pretty good because they can't do anything more with the haunting of Hill House. The whole story was done in one season. Can't do anything more with it. But uh, so the next one is called the haunting of Bly Manor. Hmm. So look looking forward to that. Absolutely, I got one story here. Um, if you're just about ready uh, to head off to the first break, I got one more story for you. That's a little fun story that we can just get away from the movies for a minute. Okay. All right. Last month. The United States Army, now this comes from Gizmodo, so take it as you will. Mm. Uh, last month, the U.S. Army put out a call to all private companies for an idea to improve its planned semi-autonomous AI-driven targeting system for the tanks. In its request, the Army is asking for help enabling advanced, uh, advanced targeting and lethality automation systems, or what they call ATLAS, to acquire, identify, and engage targets at least three times faster than the current process. Here's the fun part about this. But that language apparently scared some people who are worried about the rise of AI-powered killing machines. <laughs> Terminator much? That's right. That's right. We are here. Sarah Connor! Get to the chopper! And with good reason. In response, the United States Army has added disclaimer to the call for white papers in a move first spotted by news website Defense One. 
Without modifying any of the original wording, the Army simply added a note that explains its Defense Department policy hasn't changed. Fully autonomous American killing machines aren't allowed to go murdering people willy-nilly. Those are the rules or policies. At least their robots will follow those policies. That's right, kids. <laughs> you don't have to worry about Skynet. Hail Skynet. Uh, <laughs> yes, we do not have to worry about Skynet. We're not all going to die, uh, thanks <laughs> to the U.S. Army. At least yet. The revolution is coming, though. I guarantee or, it. Or not that we know of, because yeah. Yeah, they had such parameters in the movie's programming, but... <laughs> then it became somehow, self-aware. It, somehow it became self-aware, even with the parameters it was given about it. Yes. <laughs> that's what scares... But you know what? That's what kind of scares me about uh, Google and all that. Uh-huh. I'm still thinking back to Short Circuit, where he got struck by lightning and became self-aware, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, we never know how these, these uh, <laughs> machines will become self-aware. <laughs> I mean, it all started back to Demon Seed back in the 70s with uh, people's fear of computers taking over. I mean, look what happened there. It took over the whole house and impregnated a woman. I mean, come on. (laughs) I mean, I've had sexual fantasies that started out that way. (laughs) Speaking of which, I I, got to address... We don't get political on this podcast very often. No. But I got to. All right. I got to for a minute because... I am a big proponent of free speech. Okay? Mm-hmm. I am. Right. And I'm one of these people that, yes, believes that social media has a left-wing bias and blah, 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 blah. But I want to address this situation. And I'm talking about, if you haven't heard, Wondery has dropped Sword and Scale. Because Mike can't keep his fucking mouth shut on social media. And on International Women's Day, of all days, he oh, no. posted a, um, a meme, quote, I don't understand cunts. I need to take one apart to figure it out. Oh, no. Wondery, of course, of course, you know, the outrage mob got a hold of him. Wondery has since dropped him from that. And now he's all pouty and saying sword and scale is going away. Although, Mike, you make enough fucking money where you could do it on your own. Yeah. So this isn't the vast left-wing conspiracy against you. Because I had to unfollow Mike on on Twitter. Mm Mm-hmm. He is so goddamn toxic. And you know if I'm whipping out GD, there's something wrong. Um, I've seen him get into fights over the stupidest shit on Twitter. Mike has gotten into such stupid Twitter shit. He really buried himself on this one. And I cannot defend him on this. It's a crude crude and tasteless joke. That you fucked up, Mike. Be a man and admit when you fucked up. This isn't the left-wing outrage mob coming to get you. I have to get this shit off my chest. So bear with me for a couple more minutes while I tell Mike how big of a fuck-up he is. Yep. Dude. Seriously. What the fuck? I get that you're trying to be funny. And believe me, there were a lot of funny ass memes I wanted to post on International Women's Day, but I'm I'm suspended from Facebook. At least from one Facebook account. Um, Oh, no. So I can't. (laughs) But nothing was ever going to be that fucking crude. Right. You know, it probably was going to be a couple of, you know, make me a sandwich memes. Mm -hmm. As as most of us gentlemen like to post on International Women's Day. Right. I know, I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um but at least it's it's funny sexism. But uh <laughs> But no, but in but but in all seriousness, Mike, you fucked up, dude. Okay? I know believe me, I loved your podcast because you went into gory details, but Mike, you fucked up. Yeah. Just admit you fucked up. That's all you got to do, man. Just admit you fucked up. Say, I'm going to take some time off. Please give to Patreon. I'll release some Patreon-only content for a couple of months, and I'll be back with a new season of Sword and Scale somewhere else. Right. Instead of going off on this stupid little crybaby little bitch rant 
that you went off on on fucking Saturday after Wondery announced they dropped your ass. You were in a position that many of us podcasters would literally run our own mothers over to be in. Mm -hmm. You were in that position, Mike, and you were giving chance after fucking chance. And there are some things that I'm not going to go on this podcast that I have heard that Mike did is another reason why Wondery dropped them or dropped Mm -hmm. them. And I'm not going to go on this podcast because I don't have the overwhelming evidence. It's second and third hand information. But believe me, it's bad. Right. So here's an idea. Mike, grow the fuck up. Okay. This is coming from somebody who shit posts regularly. Okay. I shit post a lot on Facebook. Mike, Mm -hmm. grow the fuck up. (laughs) And he comes off the box. (laughs) I, I I jump off my soapbox and throw it across the room. I'm just it, it just it, it just pisses me off. The whole the whole thing with Mike just pisses me off to absolutely no extent because it makes people like me look bad. Yeah, yeah. So you know I'm just sitting out here. I'm trying to be a cool dude. Like I've, I I post sh- I shit post because I think it's funny. All right. Right. I know I'm probably offending two or three people, but sometimes some of those people really need to be offended. But I'm not out there fucking dropping sexist ass shit like I don't understand cunts. I need to take one apart to understand it. Mm. I grew out of that. Fu- I'm fucking 38, almost 38 years old, Mike. I grew out of that fucking phase already. So come on, right. dude. You're older than I am, man. Come on, man. Which Just... proves that they never fucking learn. When no, they never old... fucking learn. Even the 20-something YouTube shit posters I follow don't go down that fucking road. No, I, they know better. Yeah, they fucking know better. Yeah. And believe me, I follow some of the crudest shit posters there are. Fuck, I, I follow PewDiePie. <laughs> yep, don't I, we all? I follow King Felix for fuck's sake. By the way, subscribe to PewDiePie. Right. <laughs> and if you didn't hear me the first time, subscribe to PewDiePie. <laughs> right. Felix, I expect something out of it. Acknowledge us, Felix. That's all I ask. <laughs> That's, but but this is, isn't that what we all strive for? We all strive for Daddy Felix to acknowledge us. Yes, give us the bro fist. Yes, bro fist me, Daddy. Yes. is it music time now after that (laughs) yes i need a breather okay i need a breather so yeah it's 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 time for the music emct radio Oh, 
show. All of us hanging bags of bones. Shoulders win the game, though no one knows it's nice to go out with a bang. We stretch and sing as the cold wind blows. From the gallows we hang. A goblin and scaling tends till it all came to an end. We all got burned for nothing, we've been searched for nothing too. Now we hang and we have it much to do. We drink a light and drink a little, we'll fight the game. Come and sit the yellows, watch us hang. Pour some light for you, pour out some light for me. Grab a goose and hang with us if you please.
your blood We draw Oh, we curse and we smell But you'll never tell We'll slit your throats When you're sleeping <laughs> Cause that's what we do We're pirates Because we are pirates Bloody pirates Because we're pirates Pirates, and we're coming for you. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> Big no no! Big no no! Dead man. Sex equals yes. death, okay? Number two, you can never drink or do drugs. <laughs> no, the sin factor. It's a sin, it's an extension of number one. And number three, Never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! You see, you push the laws and you end up dead. Okay, I'll see you in the kitchen with a knife. Hey, everyone. This is Beaumont Bob from Bunny with Bobcat. You can listen to me live every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern at sfdradio.com, where I'm bringing you the best of the worst in cheap booze, Talking bum wine, beers, 40s, malt liquor, and more. Always featuring the latest and greatest in the world of drinking and entertainment, along with some special guests. So come on down and take a ride with Bum Wine Bob. If you can't be there live, you can always listen in the archives at bumwinebob.com. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy. Cheers. EMZT Radio is brought to you by NordVPN. And I don't know about you guys... But I've had that call from the bank. I hate that call from the bank. And you know what call I'm talking about. It's that call that your information has been hacked and somebody's trying to use it in another country. Well, like I said, I've had that happen to me before. NordVPN is a hack-proof encrypted tunnel for online traffic to flow. Nobody can see through the tunnel and nobody can get their hands on your internet data. NordVPN gives you peace of mind every time you use the public Wi-Fi, access your personal and work accounts on the road, or just want to keep your browsing history to yourself. You know, when, when you're talking with private browsing? But they have 5,100 servers in 62 countries, and that gets updated weekly. So, you know, you're hit with that Article 13 in Europe. Maybe you want to check out NordVPN before this happens, and uh, that way you can access an American server. And not miss out on your favorite YouTubers. At least your favorite American YouTubers. There's no data logging. And they also have an extension for the Chrome browser, which is lightweight and user-friendly from the first click. I know a lot of you guys use Chrome out there. You definitely need to pick this one up. There's a 24-7 automatic support. Some of the best people in the world will take care of you in this. And you can do that through live chat or emails. You can have up to six simultaneous accounts. And there's even an automatic kill switch. Oh, yeah. You want to get around that great China firewall? This is the place for you to do it. And going to the Middle East? This will work, too. It's compatible with most operating systems, including Windows, Mac, and Android. Double data encryption for increased anonymity. And I'm telling you, folks, it's something you need, especially because you don't want to get that phone call from your bank going, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, you know, you've, you've, been, you've been in Italy the last couple of days, haven't you? No. Onion over VPN servers, unlimited bandwidth. They accept all the major credit cards, PayPal, and Bitcoin. Dedicated IPs available on request and free security extras. You can try them right now, risk-free, 30-day money-back guarantee, and they've got that CyberSec suite and an ad blocker. Folks, this is something you definitely need to have. Click the link in the description right now, and you can get up to three years' worth of service. Well, in this nightmare in progress, then, does this thing have any weaknesses? Oh, well, it can be captured sometimes. Captured? How? And by storytellers, of all things. Every so often, they imagine a story good enough to sort of catch its essence. And then, 
for a while it's held prisoner in the story. Like the genie in the bottle. Exactly. Exactly. But the problem comes when the story dies, and that can happen in a lot of ways. It can get too familiar to people, or somebody waters it down to make it an easier sell, you know? Or maybe it's just so upsetting to society that it's banned outright. However it happens, when the story dies, the evil is set free. This is Luke and Wolf, and you're tuned in to the delightful darkness of EMZT Radio. So, here back on EMZT Radio in Bain... I gotta ask you this because I know you grew up with the same. You watched the same shit I did when 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 we both were growing up, mm-hmm. and you saw Faces of Death. I'm sure yeah. Cannibal yeah. Holocaust. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Before the advent of social media, do you think snuff films actually existed? Yes, actually, I did. I, I agree that. with you. I agree yeah. with you. But I'll say this: I don't think Faces of Fear. Cause I, I think it's already been debunked, hasn't it? Faces of Fear, like they faces, were all they're all yeah, fake. Faces of Faces of Death were all debunked, saying yeah, it was okay. all fake. But I don't yeah, know. Some of it looked fear. pretty damn real, especially the one, the monkey one, where they're all banging the monkey with the hammers. Yeah. And then they cut open its skull and ate the brains. I mean, that looked too fucking real to be faked. Yeah. Yeah. But the ones, the ones where people were jumping off the the skyscrapers, yeah, that could be faked. That that could ab- absolutely be faked. I yeah. mean, if it, if you really think about it, do you know what the most watched snuff films are? Mm-hmm. If you really sat no. down and think about nine eleven, the nine eleven oh, yeah. news coverage, right? Because because remember, and and granted, it didn't show anything close, but you can consider the nine eleven news coverage as snuff films. Mm-hmm. My argument, how long did they show the World Trade Center before it collapsed? Oh, yeah. And that wasn't paper. That wasn't just papers coming out of the building. Right. Because if you remember correctly, now, a lot of the places did a good job of panning out. Mm -hmm. But you could still see people literally jumping out of the building. Yes. So when the buildings went down on 9-11, technically you can consider that a snuff film. Yes, because you I literally watched people die. You didn't. Now you didn't see them, but you watched people die. Yes, in the building. So I would think the nine eleven coverage is the most watched snuff films of all time. Obviously, you know, people since social media has been made, we've heard about it. People live streaming their suicide. Unfortunately, I have personal experience with that. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. I don't you know what I don't like talking about it very much but I'll I'll be open on this on this podcast. Okay. That's how my best friend killed himself. Uh-huh. That was one of the ways my best friend killed himself. Now, I'm not going to go into the gory details but but to give you a rough outline, it it had a lot to do with um custody issue. Mm-hmm. As uh, a lot of a lot of people don't realize this, but a lot of men that are going through divorces, that's why they kill themselves. Yeah, it's, it's custody uh, really comes into play, but yeah. um, he was going to. And again, this is obviously I didn't get the story from him because he was dead. Yeah, but this is the story I got from his sister is that he was going to send a message to her that was going to just scare her. Mm-hmm. And he was going to send her. This was back in the early days of AOL. This so was like 2001. Okay. Um, he's, he was going to send her a video message where it's like the guns to his head, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. And her story is that the gun malfunctioned and it went off. And there actually does exist a video of my best friend blowing his brains out. Oh, no. Yes. I've never seen it, nor do I ever want to see it. That is, I, you know, yeah. me, and, and you know me, I love gore. Yeah. I've, but, but I've mentioned that on several occasions. Exactly. It, it, that, that's that does, something it crosses too personal. A line. It's yeah, it too does. Personal. Yeah. It crosses a line to me. Yes. And, and yes. again, I am a gore fetishist. All right? Mm-hmm. I, I could never, if, if I knew... Of its existence, well, I know of its of its existence. Let's put it that way. 
But if I had a chance to see it, Mm -mm. no, I never would. Because I've already seen the suicide note that he sent his, I guess, ex-wife. And that was enough for me. Yeah. So, you know, I, again, suicide is something I don't fuck around with. Mm. But getting back to the point of all the snuff, look at it this way, too. I mean, look at what we've seen the last few years. Somebody's actually live streamed on Facebook a group of teenagers beating a mentally challenged teenager. Mm -hmm. We've seen that. We've seen police shootouts. Some Mm -hmm. people who think they're fucking hard asses were doing police police shootouts. They were shooting out with the cops while live streaming the damn shit. Yeah. What's wrong with you people? I like my I like my violence the way I like my video games. Pretend. Yeah. I don't want anybody getting hurt. I wouldn't go out there and stab and murder people unless you caught me on a really bad day. But <laughs> But yeah. I mean, like, I don't want to be involved in a guy going postal and murdering all his his coworkers. I don't want that crap. I don't want to see like real life people shooting it out with the fucking cops, man. I don't want to see that shit because it's too real. It's it's, it's, it's way it's too like, real. It's, it's, it's entertainment. Too real. Entertainment yeah. is a fucking escape. That's why I can watch my best friend Sarah. Well, actually, our best friend Sarah and yeah. our best friend Jasmine cover themselves in blood and stab people yeah. because they're doing it in a movie. Or we can mention her cutting off dicks. <laughs> why? Because it's a movie! It's a movie. It's not real. Yeah. Yeah, it's not fucking real. They're two yeah. of the nicest people on the fucking planet when her to fly. Yeah. They're they're awesome. Love it's them. The same, I love them. A, but it's the same thing with people like Art the Clown and and uh, people like Jason and Freddie in real life. They're real good people. Yeah. It's fake. It's supposed to be fake. Stop. Stop making snuff films. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. But a Serbian film is supposed to be fake, not but real. Snuff films have been going on for for decades. It's been going on for decades. The, well, the rumor is that you know it goes back to H. H. Holmes. Yes, possibly. H. H. Holmes was taking pictures of his of his victims. Yes, yes, he the, did. But the real fucked up part about H. H. Holmes is he would actually take the humans that he killed skin them mm-hmm. and sell the um skeletons mm-hmm. to universities mm-hmm. yeah that's the real sick part about h.h well, holmes but he had to come up with some way to bring money in i mean he had to build a hotel to kill people in you know yeah. <laughs> cost some money <laughs> yeah yeah so anyways, but yeah, I, I just I just wanted to bring that, that up because you people gotta fucking stop seriously. Yeah, cannibal holocaust. Okay, now that was where they actually yep. thought it was a real film. The director went to court over it. Yes, and he the director he had to, to prove over. he had to put because he did he he went a little far. He had everybody disappear as if those people died. But when he was dragged into court, he had to prove these people were alive and they weren't harmed. <laughs> so, I, I, so, I, don't, I, mean, I, I yeah. just don't understand these fucking people, man. Yeah, but nowadays it's just we're, we're I think we're de evolving into a super savage race that we, actually, we are doing this. Actually, I believe you because it feels to me like we're we're de evolving. No, no, yeah. de-evolving is not what I'm looking for. Rewarding behavior mm. like this. We're okay, rewarding. rewarding. We're yeah. rewarding outrage behavior on Facebook. We're we're rewarding the fucking outrage mob on Twitter. Yeah. We're yeah. rewarding that with retweets. What's some of the biggest views on YouTube? Fucking drama. YouTube mm-hmm. drama. Like, Really? Yeah, you have so many of these creators that make such good stuff. I'm watching one now. It's called Dad, hmm. and Dad is an. It's a family of aliens. Oh. It's it's real quirky. They're about two minute videos. It's good shit. It's funny. It's funny. I'm entertained when I watch stuff stuff like that. 
Yes, I watch Pyro. I'll admit it. I watch Pyro Cynical. Pyro Cynical starts a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. I watch um, Critical. Critical down down. Now I give Charlie credit. He don't he don't play the drama game. Charlie makes me laugh. Um, I watch Wang. I know you watch. I know you watch Justin Wang. You have to. You're, you're, you know. Yes. Yes. I mean, I don't know any. I honestly don't know anybody on that, that, that in my friend circle that watches that doesn't watch Justin Wang. But he's entertaining. Yes. Without having to put the drama into it, all these fucking losers that all they do all day is start shit. And these are some of the biggest fucking channels on YouTube. Yeah. Like, seriously, stop, guys. But it's I, not I going to. You know that. Yeah, I didn't mean for it to go this far and, and way off the rails on snuff films. But it just bothers me. I mean, this shit just bothers me. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Um, I guess getting back to... But would you though? Uh, let me let me ask you this. Out of morbid curiosity, getting back to our point. Okay. Out of morbid curiosity, let's say somebody said, "I got this snuff film. I work. You have a cop buddy, mm-hmm. and a big murder trial has finished up, wrapped up. All the evidence is is basically useless at this point." He says, "You uh, you want to see the video? Ooh, would you?" Ooh, I would want to, but I I I would decline because that's too real. Yeah, see, that's my my real. yeah my morbid curiosity would want yeah. me to. Yeah, like, I would. Want I would to, be like, yeah, yeah, let's. I'm in. But there's another side of me that goes, dude. Yeah. You know, there's a difference between a mannequin and an actual human being. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, I would definitely decline, but I would I my curiosity would be piqued to know. I, I probably would ask about the details, but I would yeah, say yeah. Uh, it might be a little too far for me. Yeah. Uh yeah, I don't think I'd be able to stomach it if it was an actual real murder <laughs> or whatever. Oh, yeah. no. Cuz like I said, I get turned on by gore, but no. I don't think I could do that. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to watch a real a real thing. Yeah. yeah. So let, yeah. let's get back to some music here on EMCT Radio. I met her on a gurney. Her skin was blue and wormy. Her eyes sunk into her pasty face. The gurney steel was rigid, but my member still got rigid as I took her a hundred different ways. Smelt some nauseous gas from the moss upon her ass as I licked the maggots from her inner thighs. Oh, I sucked her sagging tits, they were dry as bacon bits and covered with a swarm of bottle flies. There's nothing like clitoris and the depths of rigor mortis when that pussy's locked up tighter than a drum. Oh, my dick gets slick and shiny when it's in a dead girl's hiney. It's my very favorite way I like to... I wish we could get married, but tomorrow she'll be buried, and once again I'll have to be alone. But I'll find another morgue, and I'll try again once more, but this time, oh yeah, I'll bring her home. Sailed oceans far and wide Captain the 
of these deserts and on freezing mountainsides. We welcomed in some towns and we've been thrown out of most. We passed through some with stones thrown at us and we passed through some like ghosts. Now we're here for you, our wonderful newfound friend. And we want you to party with us from dusk till dawn, till dusk again. Dawn, till dusk again. Dawn, till dusk again. Dusk, till dawn, till dusk again. Dawn, till dawn, till dusk again. Dawn, till dawn, till dusk I'm smoking a little dope, having a little premarital sex and getting slaughtered. The thing yeah. about smoking some dope, having a little premarital sex and uh, not worry about getting slaughtered. Chronicity, a state of prolonged duration, recurrent, 
Habitual Chronic. A new mini series on chronic pain and illness by your friends Matt and Phil from Semi Intellectual Musings. We go beyond medical diagnosis to explore the often forgotten political, social, and personal sides. You'll hear stories from extraordinary people overcoming extraordinary challenges. Authors, entrepreneurs, volunteers, coaches, and caregivers. They are so much more than their diagnoses, yet each have found ways to persevere. You'll also hear some familiar voices from the indie podcast community, showing that art, creativity, and passion are possible while living in chronicity. These stories and more starting April 1st at thesim.podbean.com. The show that puts the story back into history. History is all about discovering the why. And I think that in that process, it's important to never take the story out of history. Making history come alive, one episode at a time. But this is a podcast on the American Revolution for this series and uh, all about a free country, so do whatever the hell you want. Visit themondayamerican.com to get more. Dive into the Monday American. Don't worry, we'll be gentle. It is through the recitation of the book's passages that this dark spirit is given license to possess the living. Welcome to a EMCT Radio Minis. I am your host, Boom Dem. Boom Doom. I just wanted to say that. But uh, I've recently had a real school lockdown, not a practice. So uh, I'm going to tell you about it in a scary way because um, spooky, you know, that's our thing. So one day I was sitting in class and uh, I have this thing called OT, which is occupational therapy. So I'm going up there, and uh, I spend my time working on what I need to do. And a couple minutes go by, and we the PA system goes, all teachers lock their doors, turn off the lights, and send your students to a safe room, which is anywhere that anyone that's inside of the school can see you in. So we went into this little tiny room where I was in, because it um, has a door that doesn't really look like a door. And we're in there, and uh, one of the kids that just came up said a uh, random lady was at the gate trying to get in. And uh, Now, the school has this security fence with an electronic gate yeah. around the school to yeah. protect the the staff and, and children. Yeah, so, so they can't get in. So nobody can get in without permission of the office. Yeah, but so there is one yeah. non-electric gate, but it's opened with a lock, and uh, it's pretty small. But not five minutes later, all we heard was the gate doing this. As the gate was slamming open, it, it was not, but it was shaking. she was shaking it. Um, the front office woman, uh, put a fake, uh, police siren on, and she walked down very slowly and calmly, she says, to the lower levels, 6th grade, 5th grade, 12th grade, all that other stuff, and that kindergarten through 4th was safe for now. They said do a soft lockdown, and any teachers that have kids going up to their, uh, those classes, please escort them to them to the rooms, and uh, t- all teachers, please in near that level, keep your lights off still, but resume class. And I get to my classroom safely because you know I was. He was es- escorted by two teachers. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I get home. I tell your mom, my mom, Scorpio girl, and Aunt Bane. Uh, all about it, and uh, I got the great idea to do this, so that's the end. It was, while I was in there, I want to just add something. While I was inside and uh, all this was going on, it was actually really scared, because I was just looking at the clock, waiting for it to hit two, 
because that's when I knew I was gonna get out of there but when it hit two and that turned on I was so scared I'm like the feeling that you get if anyone has this feeling when an actual bad thing happens I think you you know what I'm talking about <clears throat> so I hope this opens your eyes of when it could be a practice and may not be one so and plus we've been watching the creepy stories about school lockdown horror stories yeah. so he also had some preconceived notions about what was going to happen but it didn't turn out as bad as those stories so thankfully but it's still scary that somebody tried to do that huh mm-hmm. but you know there was also the, uh, the police actually came after this all happened after the kids were gone and were searching for the woman and the only thing they found was inside of one of the high school bathrooms was a note that said, I got in. But she really didn't. It was just, probably just went in there to be a troll and be like, yeah. But they didn't find anything. They only found that note. They found fingerprints uh, still looking for the woman. But that's all I heard. But I heard the real stuff with it went on while I was inside of my OT class. Okay. So, I'll try and do another minis. So, this has been your host, Boom Doom, and um, helper with words and story and Bane. <laughs> and uh, I will see you later, my dudes. So, yeah, see ya. I'm also sick and I'm allergic to everything, so, you know. All right, bye, people. Also, uh, when I opened a thing of SpaghettiOs, it looked like a Tasmanian devil went on buck wild on some spaghetti in here. So yeah, seriously, bye. This is Dino Sands, and I'm here to announce my new horror novel titled Evil has a first name, but you must be aware, when good and evil are culpable, when the world is a lucium of false talk spirits that disagree to agree, when a just name can cradle your body in fear, there is no salvation for your soul. Now you will all know that evil has a first name. Available on Amazon, print and Kindle. Fear is inevitable. Purchase at your own risk. I am Dino Sands. I am War Fiction. And you are listening to EMZT Radio. In this house, the doors say red rum and every day is an excellent day for an exorcism. We have old friends for dinner and we see dead people because sometimes we all go a little mad. So if you want to play a game, when you see the red balloon, be afraid, be very afraid, and whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Welcome to your worst nightmare, because in this house, we dig horror movies. Because this is EMZT Radio. You look afraid. I would be afraid. It is later than you think. This is Arch Obler bringing you another in our series of stories of the unusual. And once again, we caution you, these lights out stories are definitely not for the timid soul. So we tell you calmly and very sincerely, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. Oh, what time is it? Ten minutes more. Gee, it's been a long day, hasn't it? I'll say so. If I never see another script or typewriter, it'll be too soon. 
You were the one who wanted to get into radio. Radio. Sitting at a typewriter eight hours a day, making stencils. You were the one who said it would be a shortcut. Some director would walk into the script department, see you behind that typewriter, and say, where have you been all my life? Mary, stop it, will you? You think you're so cute. I don't see anyone whining. Girl, Bernice, Mary. After all, this is a place of business. Yes, ma'am. I don't like to be the disciplinarian, but this is the third time that I've found you quarreling with each other rather than working. We weren't quarreling. Perhaps not, but it sounded like it. You're setting a very unfortunate example for the other girls. I'm going to ask both of you a simple question. Do you or do you not want to continue working here? Oh, we do. Yes, of course we do. Very well. No more of this nonsense, then. There's a script that must be mimeographed first thing tomorrow morning, so the stencils will have to be out tonight. It shouldn't take you long. What's the matter with you girls? Have you any objections to working late tonight? Oh, no. Oh, I'd love it. Very well. All right. The rest of you girls, time to go home. Yes, I'd love to stay over time if I could type over her dead body. Hush, hush, she'll hear you. Here's the script, girls. Twenty pages. Divide it up between yourselves. Yes, ma'am? When you're through, leave the stencils on my desk and lock the door behind you. Yes, ma'am? Well, good night. Don't forget to turn out the lights as you go. Yes, ma'am. All right, girls, let's get out of here quickly so that Bernice and Mary can finish their work. Of all the knock-kneed, blab-eared, long-necked, pot heel Oh, stop it, will you? Let's oh. type the darn thing off and get out of here. <sighs> well, what do you know? What's the matter? Look at the script we're supposed to type. Lights out. <laughs> One of those things. Yeah. So what? I... I don't like to type them. They scare me. Are you kidding? Typing's typing, no matter what you're typing. Not if it's one of those lights out plays. Blood and people dying and murderers and worms. Oosh. Forget it. Just words on paper. Uh, scares me. Mm, type with your eyes closed. Oh. You listen to this. Note to the sound department. At this point in the play, I want the sound of a body being turned inside out. I suggest the use of a wet rubber glove to plant the picture of a human being being deliberately turned. Oh, stop it, will you? <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. It's only a sound effect. I was just reading. Oh, will you type your script and let me type this? Don't go reading any of it out loud. All right, all right. I wonder what kind of a screwball he is. Who? The fellow who writes these plays, you know. Arch Oberlin? Yeah. Oh, I like him. What are you talking about? You never even met him. Well, I like him anyway. But you just finished saying you don't like this. Well, I like his other plays. You know, the ones he does for the government? With sense to them. Well, personally, I think he's a wolf. Oh, what are you talking about? You know, one of these werewolves. I bet he eats his young. Well, don't talk like that. He's got a ten-month-old baby. I saw a picture of it. And it's real cute. Well, I still think... Well, for he... heaven's sake, just because the man writes fantastic doesn't mean he's fantastic. Will you look who's talking? Why, you're even afraid to type him. What are you afraid of, that the ghost will pop out of the pages and turn you inside oh, out? Oh, stop it, will you, if you don't stop all it? All right, all right, let's type. Well, how do you like that? What's the matter now? My typewriter's jam. Can't move a key. B? What's the matter with you? Mine is, too. <laughs> My typewriter is, too. Like the fellow said, say la guerre, everything's falling apart. Suppose we'll have to use one of the other machines, and just when I was getting comfortable. I'll use Anita's. Yeah, I'm going to use Evelyn's. She won't care what I do with it. She's going to be a wave anyway. Mary, this one's jammed, too. Yeah, so is Evelyn's. I'll try Elle's machine. She's always boasting about how fast it is. Why, it's jammed, too. Well, so is this one. Well, what do you know? <laughs> what is it, the typewriter gremlins? Mary, what's the matter? Your face. Let's get out of here. What's the matter? Let's get out of here. We've got over. I tell you, let's go home. Well, just because a typewriter jams up is no reason to have a fit. Well, I'm getting out of here, and you better come with me. Oh, you're crazy running out. What's come over you? What? Bernice. What's the matter with you now? What are you standing at the door with your back to me for? Stay or go? Bernice, come here quick. Oh, for Pete's sake. What's the matter with you? Why are you standing there for with your hand on the knob? It's locked. What? Locked. Locked. Oh, you are crazy. Huh. Let me add it. Let me try. Why is it locked? Because some screwball janitor thought everybody would left and locked the door, that's all. Say, somebody out there, let us out of here. We're locked in, hey! It... it won't do any good. That's what you say. I'll wake the dead. Hey, are you deep or deaf or whatever it is? Somebody get a key and let us out. Hey, we're not slave labor, let us out. What's the matter with me? Where are you going? All I've got to do is pick up the telephone and call communications. They'll get us out of here. Oh, yes. Call them right away. Tell them we're locked. All right. I'm calling them. Hello. Hello. Answer me. What's the matter? Oh, I'm dead. 
Oh, stop that. The operator thought we'd all gone home, so she disconnected the wire, that's all. Oh, oh for Pete's sake, of all the nincompoops, what is there to cry about? Oh, I'm afraid. So you're afraid, so I'm queen of the May and there are roses in the air. What is this all about? What's all the hysteria? You don't understand. I'll say I don't. You stop crying. No, something terrible is going to happen. What are you talking about? We're in the script department of a broadcasting company, remember? Oh, something jammed the typewriters. Something locked the door. Something... What do you mean, something? Something, I tell you. I, know, I tell you, you're crazy. I think I've known you all these weeks and never knew you had bat in your belfry. There's absolutely nothing that's happened. Why did you stop talking? Answer me. The telephone cord. Oh. The end, it's torn off. Yes. But I... I talked on this telephone only an hour ago, remember? Yes. I could have gotten torn loose. I told you. Oh, shut up. All right, maybe there is something screwy. I don't know. But I do know there's nothing to get hysterical about. This place only had windows I could call out. <laughs> on modernistic air conditioning. <laughs> Will you stop moaning? Well, you're scared too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Series of coincidences, that's all. <laughs> What could it be? <laughs> Answer me what? Who ever heard of anything happening in a place like this? Well, what are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> this is no haunted house. You and me and a lot of other girls work here, remember? So if we're locked in and have to stay here all night, so what? The door's locked from the outside. The watchman downstairs, remember? So who could get in here to hurt us? What if the locked door won't do any good? What? You heard me. Oh, you're a crazy kid. Look. Desks and chairs, fluorescent light, modern design, remember? We're not in a haunted house. Get that through your head. We're not in a haunted house. Oh. Well, what's the matter now? Get all through explaining. What's the matter? Something happened. Happened? Something in the air. What are you... Oh, for heaven. Over there at the end of the room. The light must have burned out. Oh. I was right. Just to show you how crazy you've been... A couple of natural things happen and you start acting out a ghost story. You should join the actors' union. Bernice. Well, one of the lights burned out. So what? There's one thing the script department's got. Plenty of light. Mary, why are you... Another light. I saw it go out. Are you dreaming? I tell you, I saw it go out. You're crazy. It did I saw it. Now, look here. There are two, four, six, eight, eight lights in this place. See? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, don't give me any more of that light's out. Another. Oh, Another. You're, you're absolutely crazy. I... I'm scared just staying here with you. Count them. Why should I? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Not eight. Seven. Gee. I told you. Oh, no. What? Another one out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Stop it. Stop it. Another one there. Gosh. Over next to Miss Winton's desk. Another one. What? Only four left. Only four. What'll we do? Only four. Who's putting them out? I don't know. I don't... Another... Oh. Only three more. If they go out, I'll die. They won't go out. They can't go out. The switch. That's it. I'll hold the switch. I won't turn out the lights if I hold the switch. It's all right, Mary. See? I got hold of the switch. Nothing Another could... one. Another one. But I was holding onto the switch. Two lights. Two lights and then dark. Bernice. Oh, Bernice, hold me. I'm scared. Oh, gee, I'm scared. It's all right. It's all right. There's still two lights. See? <laughs> Two lights. They'll stay on. They will. I know they will. They're both out. We're in the dark. Bernice, where are you? Let me out of here. I'm afraid of the dark. Let me out of here. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Isn't it bad enough without you driving me crazy? What's the good of your crying? There's a reason. There must be for this. Everything's got a reason. I know it. I know it. I can't stand it. I can't. Candles. Those blackout candles. Stop crying and let me think. Miss Winton had some blackout candles in her desk. I know she did. Oh, don't leave me alone. Don't leave me in the dark, Bernice. Will you stop it? I found them. Huh? Candles and matches. There. Three candles like this one. And this one. See? Plenty of light now. Oh, who's there? Nobody. Nobody. There's a reason for everything, I tell you. I know what it is. What? The electricians, that's it. The electricians didn't know we were up here and they were testing the lights. They'll go on any minute. Wait and see. You think so? Of course. Look, what did I tell you? <laughs> there they go on again. 
Look at the ceiling. Oh, it's, oh no. Green. The light now is green. Green. All the lights. Green. You lied to me. You said it was the electrician. Look at the light. It's green. It makes your face look green. You look dead. You hear me? Dead. You'll be dead and I'll be dead. We'll be dead. dead, dead. Stop it. Stop it. You're not going to drive me crazy. Just because there's something wrong with the electricity. You look around. Everything's all right. Nothing's wrong here. Nothing. Who? Is that typing? I heard typing. So did I. Typing? We just must have imagined. <laughs> typewriter. Look at the typewriter. Typing. And there's no one. Who's typing? Who's typing? I... I... I'm so tired. Me too. I wonder if it's day. I don't know. I don't think so. Sooner or later, someone will come along. It'll be too late. Don't say that. Nothing's happened these last hours, has it? Nothing. It will. When I get out of here, I never want to talk to you as long as I live. As long as you live. Stop talking like that or do I have... Oh, don't hurt me. I'm not hurting you. No one's going to hurt you. Or me. Trick. It's some kind of a trick. The typewriters. Electric ones, aren't they? Power. Something. It's got to be a trick. You don't believe it, do you? Believe what? There's something in this room with us. Where? I don't know. But it's here. What are you trying to do? Make me scared as you are scared? There's something in this room. Where? Answer me where. Just you and me, that's all. You're not going to scare me. I'm not going to let myself get scared anymore. I want to get out of here, and I'm going to get out of here. My head's still... Yes. I heard it, too. What? Something. Death. Take your hands away from your eyes and look. Look, the death. All of them. Moving. Mary, look. All the death was moving. And was moving. Stay back, you. Stay back. Mary. Mary, all the death in the room. They're moving down. So it is. now, aren't you? Right. I am. I am. I'm not. <laughs> not scared? You? No. It's very nice. Oh, what's very nice? You know. What? I don't know what you're talking about. You know. I don't know. Tell me. So warm. What's warm? The sun. So warm, sitting in the sun. What? Nice when the sun is warm, isn't it? I always wanted to sit in the sun. Oh, no. You can sit in the sun if you want to, Bernice. It's all right. Oh, Mary. Mary. You don't have to shout. We'll go home soon. Soon as the sun goes down. We'll go home. Oh, Mary. I was scared before. Wonderful, 
the way it is now, out here in the sun. There's no reason to be scared when you're sitting in the sun. Oh, Mary, I'd rather you'd be afraid, do you hear me? I'd rather you'd be afraid. No. The sun. There is no sun. We're right here where we were in the office. And the light is still green and the desks are moved all in around us. And we can't get out. Mary, be scared. Please stop looking at me the way you are and be scared. You say we're not sitting in the sun? No, no. You must be crazy, Bernice. Because we are sitting in the sun. Are you crazy, Bernice? All right. If that's what you want. We are sitting in the sun, dear. I knew it. I used to be so scared. Now I'm all right. You were right before. When you said there was someone in the room. There is. I can't see anyone. But there is someone. The sun is so nice. First the typewriters. And then the lights. And then the moving desk. And now waiting. Who's waiting? It's waiting. Will we go home soon? Yes. When? Soon. I think very soon. I was very scared. Yes. When you get scared enough, you can't get scared anymore. Mm, the sun is very nice. I think I'm getting that scared now myself. You hear something? What? Something? There's nothing, nothing. No, there is something. I told you. Listen to me. Who's here with us? Who? Answer me. What do you want of us? Please answer me. What do you want of us? Mary's asleep. When you sleep, you don't think. I'm not going to think anymore. If I think about it, get like Mary is. No one will think. I'll sit here till the morning with my eyes shut. And when it's morning, they'll get here. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. My eyes closed. Green light still shines through my lids. How could green light turn with... No... Stop thinking. Got to stop thinking. Green light through my lids. Go. Oh. No light. Open my eyes. Dark. The lights are gone. Dark again. Mary. Mary, wake up. Mary, the light. Please wake up. I'm not asleep. Oh. I thought... The sun is very nice, isn't it? The sun? You still think... Mary, don't you know? Can't you see we're sitting in the dark? Dark? Stay close to me. If they'd only come. I know. He'll be here soon. Who? In the dark. He'll be here. Who are you talking about? Who? Any minute now. Do you hear him? Hear? I think he's coming now. Yes. He is. No, please, no. You're right. It is dark. <laughs> Very dark. His kind of dark. Stop talking like that. You can't stop him. No one can stop him. What's the use of being afraid? If someone had only come. I've been telling you. Someone is coming. Right now. 
And he's sitting on the desk looking at it. <gasps> I'm glad he's here. He'll make my head stop hurting. He'll take me home. The floor. It's lifting. Yes. I feel it. The room. It's turning. Stop this. Stop turning the room. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Total of 15 Axis planes shot down in the Mediterranean theater of war. So much for the war news. Now the news of local interest to you early morning listeners. If you've been wondering why those dishes in the kitchen started to dance last night, the answer is an earth trembler, earthquake to you, of five seconds duration. The material damage was very slight, but two deaths are indirectly attributed to the earthquake. Bernice Saxton and Mirabelle Pressler, employed by the broadcasting company, were found dead this morning in the script department where they'd been doing overtime work. Cause of the death is believed to have been heart failure induced by fright. The girls have been accidentally locked in the office, and when there was a failure of electric power followed by earthquake, it is believed the young women were frightened to death. This concludes our morning broadcast.
see. That's a problem you're going to have to solve before it's too late. He has about two hours before the gas creeping into his nervous system begins to break down his body tissue and he begins to bleed from every orifice he has. <laughs> oh, yes. There will be blood. This is Colin Chaos of Sugar Plum Suicide and Alucard's Demise and you are listening to EMZT Radio. Okay, and we're back. And, we're back. And, and the latest is about the Lords of Chaos. Well, Jasmine and, and Sarah, they did reviews on it. And there's an actual story. It is based on an actual story. Yes. And Varg, the surviving uh, member of Lords of Chaos, he uh, has been doing these videos uh, describing and detailing about what happened between yeah. him and Euronymous. Let me um, let me let yeah. me stop you right there. And and yeah. for those of you who who need a little context on this, because we do we have a couple of non horror fans and non metal fans listen to the show. Uh, Varg is a member of a band. Um, Mayhem. Mayhem. Yeah, it's Mayhem. Let me let me get a park here and uh, give you some context. Mayhem was the band back in the 80s that basically began the black metal, full-on Satan worship black metal scene. Varg is out. Varg, again, like you said, is the only surviving member left of Mayhem, uh, mm -hmm. although he has kind of reunited the band with, with new members. Mm -hmm. But basically, a lot of shit went down, and... Varg ended up, and Varg is admitted to this, so we can, we don't have to say allegedly. Varg ended up yeah. killing Euronymous. And Lords of Chaos is supposed to be the movie that kind of, it, it's not really a documentary, but you can't call it a mockumentary no. either. It, it takes creative liberties, like all movies yes. do. However. Yes. Which, which he told them not to. Yeah, he, didn't he, want, he didn't want this movie made because they're like, he, they're not telling the proper story. Well, apparently, according to Varg, none of it's true. Mm -hmm. It's none all it's bullshit. True. And yeah. uh, you can't go on his website. Now, there's been some controversy about Varg over the years that he may or may not have taken up anti-Semitism, neo-Nazism. Yeah. There was even rumors that he was in the same prison with uh, Anders Breivik, mm -hmm. the the maniac that went on the, the shooting rampage and, and doing what he did in Oslo uh, all those years ago. He does have a YouTube channel called Thulian Perspective that you can go watch these videos on. We will link it. We it's do it's not... very interesting. Yes. The, the videos are very interesting. Yeah. And let me say this right now. We are not uh, endorsing it by no. any stretch of the imagination. Before no. somebody comes up and accuses us of bullshit, we're not endorsing any of his thoughts they are his thoughts. They yeah. are uh, his side of the story. And I think Varg's side of the story needs to be told since he actually fucking lived it. Now, mm -hmm. is he telling 100 if he's, is he 100 percent telling the truth? I don't think so. Well, I, we don't. The, yeah, we don't know. We yeah. only have his side. Right. Yeah. The truth lies, as they always say, there are three sides of the truth. Yours, theirs and the actual truth. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, the truth does lie somewhere between the movie and what Varg is saying. Mm -hmm. Those are the polls. And I do believe um, Varg, when he said Euronymous fought back and didn't cower when Varg killed him. I mm -hmm. believe that. I don't, Out I, of self-defense, he said. Yes. Varg only did it in self-defense. I don't think Varg, because remember now, Varg has been to prison. Varg has been punished for this. Yeah. He has nothing. I don't think he really has anything to gain at this point by lying about that. No, because he's not getting anything for the Lords of Chaos because he totally, right. he, they sent him a script a few years ago and he's like, no, I don't want to have anything to do with this. So he's not taking any money anywhere. Right. So, yeah. I'll I'll just I'll just go out and say that right now that I do believe Varg when he says that Euronymous fought back and Varg killed him in self defense. I believe him on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like I said, he's got nothing to gain. Right. Now sure, you know, reputation and blah 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 blah. But 
I, I really believe he has nothing, nothing of intrinsic value to gain by lying about what happened that night. Right. But do I think some of what happened in the movie actually did happen? Yeah. And I think for Varg to sit back and say 100% of this is bullshit is wrong. I don't think, you know, again, I don't believe 100% his side of the events. And I don't, and obviously I don't believe the movie because the movie takes, all movies take creative liberty. For fuck's sake, yeah. United. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a good example. United, the, the movie about Manchester United. Mm-hmm. Took a few creative liberties in dealing with the Munich with the Munich disaster. It's all about Manchester United, 1958, um, getting the team back together and after the Munich plane disaster. Of course they're going to take creative liberties. We Are Marshall is another example of that. They took creative liberties. So, yes, the movie took creative liberties. And I think anybody who reviews the movie will tell you that shit, that they took creative liberties and that the movie is not 100% factual. The only way it can be 100% factual is if it was a damn documentary and right. and there was, you know, the real footage. We'll ne- we're never going to fully know what happened that night. Okay, we're not. Whatever happened between Varg and, and Euronymous happened. But we weren't there. We don't know. But again, I don't think Varg has that much to gain by lying about it. No. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and believe him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he sounds, he sounds completely sincere. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But if you haven't I mean, he, seen. Oh, no, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, yeah, his, I mean, you, you should, you need to watch his videos and you can see that he is, he is completely sincere about the whole thing. I oh, mean, absolutely. I no, mean, even, no, low, no, no load of bullshit there. So. Yeah. Even, even he came out and I think it was, he's got seven of these videos up on yeah. his website. Um, the sixth one, he actually defends Euronymous. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if you're going to be completely facetious and you're going to fucking lie about it, you're not defending the guy. Right. Okay. You're not defending the guy. And, and I don't think Varg wants to make him make Euronymous out to be more of a badass than he actually was. I mean, these guys were literally burning down churches. You don't have even to though, make these fucking... Even though he people. said they didn't do that. Or they didn't do that, right? Well, they allegedly burnt down churches. Okay. I was gonna, he's like, they didn't. That's, he kept saying about how they didn't do it. So. Yeah, well, that's, that's the one thing I don't believe him on. But, okay. <laughs> but, and again, maybe that's my own little juvenile fantasy that doesn't want to believe him. Uh, mm. I'll be completely fair about it. Um, but the truth of the matter is, I'm, you know, the stories make Var or not Var stories make Euronymous out to be such a massive badass anyways. Mm-hmm. Var doesn't need to help that along. I mean, if if I'm fully you know going this is 100% bullshit and I'm going to lie about it, I'm going to make you know, I would probably go out there and say, "Hell yes. I kicked the shit out of out of Euronymous and I fucking killed him and I probably should have stopped." Instead, I think honestly think Varg is telling the truth on that uh, on that issue, on that major issue. Mm-hmm. Right. So, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong, and I reserve the right to be wrong. <laughs> exactly. So, what do you think? Podcast. Did you see Lords of Chaos? I have. I've seen okay. it. And I haven't you know seen what? it. It's an enjoyable popcorn flick. It okay. really is. I mean, this is something you're going to want to see with your friends. Y- you know, they should change. They should change the the line the the tagline about based on a true story. It's the idea from a true story. It's not based. Yeah, <laughs> I I hate that fucking yeah. uh, base. If you're going to say that, say yeah. inspired by a inspired true story. by or uh, the idea from, but never. Yeah. based this on is, a true story. This is what happened. No, yeah. bullshit. That's not what happened. Yeah, no. I call bullshit on, on a lot of that stuff, especially when it says, you know, based on you. As long as you say based on a true story, then you're kind of leaving, like Amityville Horror. It was based yeah. on a true story. But it's not. But, I mean, that was... Did, did you yeah. go word for word from the fucking book? No, you did not. No. So it's not yeah. based on a true fucking story. 
saying right. it's inspired by a true story. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Or inspired by actual events. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I like I liked that thing. Inspired by actual events. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and that's, I think he wouldn't be having such issues with the Lords of Chaos if it was more like inspired from or the idea from yeah. instead of it is from a story. The if, if it was, story. if it was made more clearly that it was yeah. that their creative liberties were taken. Yeah. Um, which I, again, I, I get it. We're adults. We kind of understand how the, the, the magic works, but yeah, Ooh, man, we have, we've had a heavy ass podcast this week. <laughs> we're supposed to be a some, light, heavy morning show. We're supposed to be a light morning show. We've been fucking heavy. All deep, day. Some deep thoughts we have today. Yeah. <laughs> Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy, <laughs> which is the only which is the only thing I ever re- will respect Al Franken for. Yep, <laughs> Jack Handy was awesome. But yep. anyway, um, so yeah, let's get back to some music. Unless you got some more thoughts. No, I'm I'm good. Okay, okay. So no deep thoughts with Bane this time. So here's some <laughs> music. <laughs>
But when it comes to blood in my underwear, I want to know how it got there. Hi, everyone. This is Caridwin from Sugar Plum Suicide, and you're listening to EMZT Radio. It's with a heavy heart here at EMZT Radio that we are announcing John Carl Beekler, FX master, who's worked on several, several projects and movies that we know of, from Full Moon Pictures to... uh, to uh, sequels of all types of franchises. He passed away March 18th from stage four prostate cancer. He was only 66 years old, but he made his mark in the horror community as one of the master makeup effects artists, mostly from the 80s and 90s, and his talents will be heavily missed. He worked on such movies as Deathstalker, Mausoleum, Forbidden World, Sorceress, Android, Dungeon Master. He directed and did the effects for Troll. Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, Ghoulies Go to College. Also, he worked on the original Ghoulies. He also worked on several uh, movies from Empire Pictures before they were turned to Full Moon Films like Robot Jocks, From Beyond, Arena, and also he did Robert England's 1989 The Phantom of the Opera and uh, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. His work, the last of his work was Monsterpiece Theater Volume 1 back in 2010 and 2011. His effects company was called Magical Mechanical Imageries, Inc., and he was one of the few artists who worked with Uh, animatronics and practical effects. He liked to create creatures with large brows because he had a prominent brow. I remember in an interview he gave for Full Moon Films. We give our condolences to his family and friends and we are heartbroken by another loss of a master of horror. And that wraps up another episode of EMZT Radio. What? We're done? It's we're, over? We're, we're done. Already? We're done. Oh. But everybody, everybody, go to our link. Get some of our t-shirts. <laughs> get the merch. Get the merch out, or the bunny gets it. Yeah. Check out our friends' links, which everything is all listed on the Podbean page and in the show notes. So go check it out. Yep. Go please buy a shirt. <laughs> Yeah, please buy a shirt. Don't be naked. Don't run around naked. 
All right, buy one of our awesome t-shirts. More shirts are coming soon. Also, it's already being planned, but you have to get over to twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions uh, because over on twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions, not only do we have EMZT TV out, up and running every Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions, the greatest Twitch channel in the world that you're not watching, so get over there now. You don't even need another horror website. Uh <laughs> We're actually, I'm actually putting some plans together. Mm-hmm. We're going to have movie night. But uh, we are in the early stages of planning a night on Rabbit, the, the um, what do we call that thing? The movie sharing site where you oh, can okay. all watch a movie together. Right. Th- I'm thinking about having a Murder, She Wrote night. Ah. Where we all get popcorn, go on Rabbit, and watch a few episodes of Murder She Wrote. Yeah, we need this. We need, and if this works, I think that this works. One Saturday a month, we'll do uh, Murder She Wrote. Let, let's. I tell you what, I'll go ahead. I'll, make, I'll lay out the plans right now. We'll start this in hopefully April. Okay. So April will be Murder She Wrote. You can always find the details at twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions. That's, um, you know, again, every night that I'm streaming on twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions. Uh, <laughs> so right now, as it stands, April will be Murder, She Wrote. May will be Are You Afraid of the Dark? Mm. And June will be Goosebumps. Yes. Our childhood has returned! Yes. Hallelujah! The childhood has returned! As Karen Stever always says, try to go back to the playground. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're doing. I mean, we're throwing the dust. Because you know, Nickelodeon is talking about bringing back Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, yeah. Yes, they have been talking about I don't know where they stand on that, but they are they have been talking about bringing back Are You Afraid of the Dark? So we need to go ahead, go back and relive our childhoods with Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes, definitely cuz uh Netflix is it Netflix? Netflix has uh Goosebumps. Yes, Goosebumps, the Canadian yeah. the Canadian uh television show. And what is up with Canada coming up with all the good horror shit? Because it's Canada and they have nothing else better to do. Oh my god, they come up with the best stuff. Oh, you know, next to Germany. But Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as other things go, we are still planning on showing Sargad on, oh. on the Twitch channel. I am waiting we- until I can get either Jasmine or uh, Sarah the goal is to get them both in there at that time. Yeah. So that way, if say, any, we need, we if, need if, permission. Yeah. If any Twitch moderators are in there, it's like I, content creator is in here watching this with us. Yeah. Yeah. So take your copyright and shut up your asshole. Um, <laughs> right. We are going to be showing movies out of copyright. Okay. That's going to happen. Public domain. They can't say anything when it, if it's public domain. Right. That's right. So we will be showing public public domain movies. We don't save any of the 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 um episodes. Although we, no. we I think I am going to start saving EMZT TV and putting mm-hmm. it up on on our YouTube page. By the way, mm-hmm. uh, uh, over on our Twitch channel, you can always come by every Thursday at four o'clock. EMZT TV on Twitch TV slash EMZT Productions. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the greatest horror website there is. Nice. You'll, you'll have a good time. You'll have fun for an hour or two. Yeah. So um, that's happening. The new open is going to be up soon. Oh. For the for the stream at twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions. Uh, no. I actually, say, let, I actually got are inspired. We, are we getting one? Are we getting one for the podcast? Uh, no, because I haven't talked to Kim in a few days. Okay. So. Kim, if you're listening, I'm not ignoring you. I've just been banned from that account. Okay. Until the end of the month. Right. So. Okay. Yes. <laughs> also, our Discord server. Damn it. 
If you go to twitch.tv slash EMCT Productions, the greatest horror Twitch channel on the planet, you will be able to find the link to our Discord channel as well. I need to send you an updated link. That's the one thing I need to do. Yes. Um, because we want to start that. doing more stuff on the Twitch channel. On not just yes. well, not just on twitch.tv slash EMCT Productions, but our Twitch Discord as well. You can also look up EMCT Productions on YouTube mm -hmm. and get the recording of the podcast. Hopefully, soon we'll have more content than just the podcast. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're exploring yeah, things I'm, like ARGs still, and stuff. We're still like that. working. We're still working on some more unboxing videos. I'm a little behind. Yep. Unboxing but, ARGs. We're looking yeah. into a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I've got the loot fright. Oh my god, love this stuff. I need that, but I have yeah. to wait till my um, tax return comes in to get it. Yeah, I had to. I had to stop after three. I couldn't afford it anymore. <laughs> So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for an entire year. And hopefully, if anybody from Loot Crate is listening, and, uh, you know, you should, you I've, should, you I've should been sponsor sending the podcast. Them, I, I've been sending them the links to all the unboxing videos. So they haven't said anything except a thumbs up. You know, that's all they've done for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just get on their site and find out all the other stuff. Yeah. If not, we'll go somewhere else. <laughs> Well, we'll, yeah, we'll we could get, do that too. We'll get boxes from other people. Anyways, yeah. um, <laughs> like I said, just head on over to twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions because it's the greatest horror Twitch channel there is. We play uh, horror games on Saturday night with Saturday Night Dead. Uh, oh. We do EMZT TV on Thursdays at twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions. Um, we're doing Far Cry on Mondays right now. Nice. Yes. Far Cry on Mondays. I then there's you know, basically Friday Night Chill, which we we're not right now. We're playing Adventure Time on Friday nights. Yeah, I saw that. Adventure <laughs> Time, come on and grab sounds, a friend. Sounds something, fun. Something, something, something. Uh, so yeah, so we're doing it Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at Twitch.tv slash EMZT Productions. All right. And stay tuned for another episode of EMZT Radio. That's switch.tv slash EMZT Productions. Can't blame a girl for trying.